everybody, I'm Joanne Young, and today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this landscape. This is an intuitive painting. I had no idea ahead of time what I was going to paint. I'm bringing you guys along with me on this painting journey today. Throughout this video, you're going to learn so much from color mixing, shading, highlights, uh, complementary colors, basically everything in this painting, start to finish, you're going to learn, and some great tips and techniques, hacks that you've never heard of before and you don't want to miss a thing in this video so. so if you guys are ready to learn how to paint this one today go ahead and hit that subscribe if you haven't already and let's get painting so as you can see we're working on a really big canvas today and i primed it with black and white so i just took a little bit of black a little bit of white and made it really patchy so that we've got instant shadow spots and uh, other areas that have more light to them so when you approach the background the underpainting like this and don't try to make it all one color you're left with lighter patches like this so if you're not sure what to paint that can be a guide for you right away and it makes it really simple and easy and it helps you to start envisioning a landscape and uh, a lighter area here so maybe right here we could have uh, some sunlight some sun rays maybe some waterfalls and maybe a little pool uh, lake or river right here and then where it's a little bit darker we'll naturally have some contrast and shadow so that's a little tip for you guys that you may not have known about um, but this is all dry now and I'm ready to begin the painting the first stage I'm going to be using this beautiful bright yellow it is by Liquitex Basics Acrylics and it's cadmium yellow light hue so let's go ahead and start this first step. You're gonna need a large brush. I've got a number 50 filbert brush that I'm gonna be using, but any large brush will do. It's just for creating the background and building up some light and color right now. So all you're gonna to wanna to do is get your brush a little bit wet. We're gonna be using a little bit of this yellow here to start. Just load the brush really well like this. And all I wanna do is just simply brush over the existing gray and by doing this, we're going to make green. Now, depending on what kind of yellow you're using, you'll get a different hue, temperature, and tone to your uh, green. So it's pretty dry. That means I know I need to get a little bit of water. So I'm just going to pick up just a little bit of water here, loosen some of that paint out of my brush with that water, and just continue along. specific brush stroke here. I'm just trying to cover up this section of the canvas. Get a little bit more water. Now if you want to use a blending medium to thin your acrylic out a little bit and help to blend it, that's fine. I just like to use water. It's free and it works really well for me. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more here and now I'm going to start to go up and down because I want to have my trees along the side like this and we're going to just use the trees along the side like this to draw our eyes into the center here where we're going to have a little bit more light and I'm going to come over to this side now switch sides and cover this up now the canvas is a little bit darker here. I used more black, so we're still gonna have, we're not gonna lose that shadow. It's gonna be naturally darker, which is nice. So it's really fun to do this underpainting. It helps me to see my light and dark areas. And sometimes when I don't know what to paint, I just see light and shadow. And then I start to kind of just imagine uh, a landscape out of that. So that could be a fun exercise for you all to try if you want to become more of an intuitive painter and make up your scenes and you're maybe tired of following reference photos and you want to grow as an artist. It's a wonderful way to do that and it's just good for the soul. It's good for you. It gets you out of comfort zones. Um, it just really really helps you to grow 
uh, more creatively as an artist if you want to be more of an authentic painter. Now the next step for this painting is taking some titanium white. Uh, I'm using Liquitex Basics Acrylics today, but you can use any white that you want. I'm just gonna scoop up a whole bunch here. And I want my bright spot to be right in here. So I'm gonna take some white along with some yellow. And it's gonna dry a lot darker than this because I'm working on a darker background and because in general acrylic always dries a little bit darker. So just keep that in mind. I'm just going to take a little bit of water, thin this out, have it sort of start to fade out into the side. And then here I want to decide where I want my path or river to be. So something's going to be down here. And as I'm doing this, it kind of looks like water, doesn't it? Maybe we could, let's do that. Let's make this a little flowing creek or a river down here. But you could easily make it a path if you wanted to. So I'm just pulling side to side. Gosh, it takes a lot more physical <laughs> work when you're painting a large canvas like this. Kind of getting a workout while you're creating. Okay, I'm just going to soften this a little bit more. Bring some more of this paint down here. I've got lots there to work with. That was really generous. Then very lightly So going back up here, just doing some smaller, shorter brush strokes. I've got lots of paint there, so when I push and pull off, I'm taking a little bit of that paint off. But at this point, this is kind of helping me to separate uh, the water from the background. And I just want to sort of blend this. And if you're watching me for the first time, you're noticing that I'm switching hands. I am... Uh, ambidextrous I guess you could say I use both hands if I need to when I'm painting and especially with a big canvas like this it gets tiring so I need to you'll notice me switch it up a little bit uh, for filming purposes it's best if I use my left hand now just so that you guys can see what I'm doing better I'm gonna switch over to another brush now this is uh, number 10 stipple mop brush it's a little bit stiffer than my other uh, mop brushes. Um, it doesn't say, I think it's synthetic, feels very synthetic to me, but any stipple brush or mop brush will work for this. Uh, this is just one of my larger ones. It's one of my newer ones. So I want to give it a little bit of a try for this area of the painting. I don't have anything on my brush. What I'm uh, trying to accomplish here is uh, giving a really soft background perspective of foliage. So this is off into the distance, right? And we're going to have some light. So look at what happens when I push and tap. I'm taking off a little bit of that paint. I'm pushing in and it's taking a bit of that paint off and we're left with some really soft looking bushes that are have a soft glow from that sun. So that's a, a neat little tip for you guys. You can instantly do this while the paint is still wet and kind of thick like I have it back there. So it's helpful. You can take advantage and manipulate some of that paint around. Now I've got, I took that paint off by pushing, right? It's in my brush and I can bring it over here. So with a little bit of paint that I've taken off here, I can go back and maybe take off a little bit more if I need to. And I can just use it over here to create some soft looking little bushes. Look how 
moody that looks, so soft and tranquil. And all I'm using is the paint that's already on here. So pretty. Now we can do the same up here. We can start creating some little trees, foliage, leaves, whatever, by doing the same, using that same technique. So the next step is I really want to bring a big tree over here and I want to add a complementary color. So I want to bring a really big, big tree over here that has a lot of character, a lot of movement, and a lot of branches. You may remember, uh, this is going to be a little similar, but kind of, kind of mirrored, opposite and flipped, of a painting I did with my daughter. I'll leave a link below of a beautiful big red tree with a red path down the middle, inspired by Vancouver Island where we live. Um, so if you like this painting and you want to learn some more really cool tips and techniques and another take on this painting, I'll leave a link below. You guys might really enjoy that. And you might just be curious to see my daughter, my grandbaby. So there's a little sneak peek of him in there. Uh, it's a couple years old. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to do this big, big tree over here. I'm going to choose a really rich, beautiful red. You could use, um, burnt sienna. You could tint your black with any red that you want. It's going to look just gorgeous with this yellowy green that we've got, okay? That's really important to think about complementary colors when you're working on a landscape. Because um, what really grabs you, what grabs me when I see a painting and really anything in general, I'm really visual with color. So colors can be really intense. They can invoke emotion, feeling, and excitement. So that's what we're going to try and do with this painting today. So for my black, I'm just using this uh, little craft deco art, crafter's acrylic, just cheap, thin black paint. I find I like to use this for my black because it is really thin, very fluid and easy to mix other colors into because rarely do I ever just use black. Uh, so it's a good mixer for other colors to create uh, different, richer tones of the darkest contrast you want in your paintings, if that makes sense. Now the red I'm going to be using today is Scarlet Red. This is by Arteza. It's a really nice red. Um, it's more of a warm red rather than a blue red. And I think it's going to look gorgeous with this lime green that we've got here. So because I'm working on such a large canvas, I'm going to use a large brush. This is sort of like the brush I used at the beginning. That was a number 50 filbert. I've got a number 30 this time. And I chose this brush because I can fill the thicker areas of the tree trunk up a little bit easier, but I can also make things kind of rounded and have that flowy movement that I really want with the branches. So I'm just going to get my brush a little bit wet first. And I'm going to take some red and some black and get this really deep, beautiful red tone. And I'm going to start, I've got the painting, I should, I'll show you guys at the end, I've got the painting up on my wall right now here in my studio. And I'm going to start right up here, just go right into it. And it, this makes, so this will make a little bit of a chocolatey, fudgy brown color. And if you want something a little bit more on the cool side, purpley red side, then you could add some magenta, some violet. There's so many ways you could take this that will still be complimentary. And it's just gonna fade off here into the side. We're gonna have some ferns and some um, other foliage going on and whatever else I decide to incorporate. So when I turn my brush, I want to flatten it first. So I'm just going to push and get it nice and flat. And then I can use it like this for creating branches. You just want to feel kind of just really loose and flowy.
And then just add some shadow here along the side. I'm just working out the excess paint in my brush. in on this side and just start to create some more shadow along the edges here that's going to help to draw our eyes in and emphasize the light making this the focal point and center of interest and we want to do this gradually we want to have a nice gradation of dark to light that keeps the painting feeling more relaxed you could add a few little rocks if you want, just by going pushing up. It's always nice to have a few little stones in a creek setting. I'm gonna continue along here. these little branches. And then I'm going to come in with uh, a little liner brush and add tinier ones so we can get a bunch of different widths to our branches so they kind of gradually get smaller and smaller. And then we'll have little bits of moss hanging I could even add a little bit of that now. I'm gonna go into a little bit of that, a little bit more of my red this time. And I'm gonna turn my brush on the side like this. Hope you guys can see everything I'm doing here. I normally don't flip over to this side to paint, but I've got such a large canvas I'm working on today. And I gotta say, this is fun. It's fun to kind of just change up the sizes and canvases that you're working with. It's all about trying to stay interested and motivated, right? And this is a great way to do that. I'm going to take, without washing my brush off, just a little bit of this yellow in here and just add a little bit of a glow to the tops of some of these stones here. Just a little bit of sunlight. Maybe it's a bit of moss. And this mixed with what's left in my brush is going to create some nice colors. Oh, that's pretty. Now that was a little, little accident there. See how I kind of just went and pulled and flicked a little bit off of the yellow there and it ended up looking like a beautiful little uh, highlight and kind of a ripple effect there in the water. Let's try that again. So I'm going to tap and then barely touch, barely touch and pull out. Now if I pick up a little bit of white and I'm not going to push and blend too much because I don't want to change the color to uh, brown by I've got a little bit of that red and black in my brush so I'm just gonna really lightly get a bit of white on there and then maybe I can add a little bit more in here maybe sneak a little bit of light in here just a little bit more and then a pull. Well, that's just so pretty. The way it's picking up a little bit of that red in there. 
and creating a soft, soft peachy tone, depending on uh, how you're viewing it through your screen of whatever you're watching it on. But here in real life, as I'm painting this, it's a very beautiful peach, peachy color. So I'm going to go ahead and start to add little bits of this here. Now this is going to mix in. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that red and black color that I've got for that moss in with this yellow and white. You could definitely use a different brush for this if you wanted to. Um, you could use a filbert brush. You could also use a fan. Now I've got to wash this all out of my brush because with acrylic paint, you don't want to leave it sitting in your brush too long, drying out, and it'll ruin the brush. So I'm going to wash all of this out and load my brush up again. Okay, so it's nice and clean. I'm going to go back to that white and yellow. And... Start adding a little bit, little bits. So it's a combination, right, of tapping and pulls because then we get that, that drapey feeling that creates that mood. I love trees that have weeping like willow trees or weeping bits of moss and vines. I think I'm going to work a little bit on some more skinny branches. So what I'm going to do is switch over to a liner brush. Okay, so I've got a liner brush here. Filbert, or not a filbert, sorry. Um, a round brush would work too on a canvas this big. Um, this one, if you're curious, is a number two, and I'm going to just start right in here, not a lot of pressure. I like to twist and roll my brush and then kind of just let off and do these little flicks, barely touching, just really light ones. And then take, well, let's take a little bit of that yellow. Look at that pretty color that we make. And we can go ahead and add a little bit of that here and there. Bring some warmth into some of these areas. I don't want to lose this beautiful deep rich color that we've got. I know that it's going to dry darker though so it can be nice to be a little bit generous with that red. Wait for it to dry and it's super easy to cover up if you have to. If you decide oh it dried too bright brighter than what you wanted, all you do is just simply go over with a little bit of that black to balance that out. And I'm not worried too much about this side because I'm going to be adding some stuff that's going to go over top of this. Uh, we're going to be using some turquoise. We're going to be paying attention to more of our cool shadows. Okay, I'm going to just continue with these branches here. Twisting, rolling with my brush. Could add a little bit of 
red here and there. Keep with that whole color theme that we've got going on. I'm going to demonstrate now how to create some um, the moss, the drapey uh, foliage using a fan brush, just so you guys can learn how to use this if you don't have some of the other brushes that I've got. So I'm going to take black because this is really, I want this to be dark over here, black with red. I've got this dark gray background and I want these to stand out. So I'm just going to simply tap. Now you can turn your brush straight up and down, straight up and down, push and tap. And you can also gently pull and flick. Use a little bit of water if you want. Water really helps. Use a little bit more black. So by adding this, these dark hanging vines here, this is going to really make that grayish background stand out, which is nice because it's a cool gray that we've got there. It almost has, uh, from how I'm seeing it here in real life, it almost has a smoky purple tone to it, and I love that. And so I think that's going to inspire me with my color choices. I'm definitely going to be using, playing up on that and using that uh, for some of my foliage and, and shadows coming up here pretty soon. I'm just gonna get a little bit of water on my brush. Take a little bit of this black and yellow. And see, I'm creating a rake fan brush by doing that now. So you don't always have to have a rake fan brush. Like in my other videos, I'm always showing you guys a rake fan brush, but you could make one um, just by letting the bristles kind of separate into little sections like this. So it looks like a mini rake, doesn't it? So I'll show you guys a cool technique you can uh, do with this. You can just kind of line it up very lightly, pull for some little ripples and shadows. And then I like to turn it the other way, push. You can also create some little rocks like this as well. They're a little bit messier, but we can change that by adding a little bit more of our yellow and then really lightly just give it a little scoop on the top, little scoops. I don't want it as bright as that area there. I don't want every, I don't want a bunch of um, areas to be too bright and compete with one another. Right, you wanna have just a few areas that have some nice bright highlights because uh, less is more. Then I'm gonna keep using this brush, show you guys that you could use this or adding some more hanging vines. Now this would look really pretty as wisteria as well. You could just use your imagination. The possibilities are endless with what you could do with this image today. You could add a, a bridge in the background. I've got so many videos with Monet types of bridges in them. So I'm gonna leave that out of this one. That would make for a very long video, but if you're interested in adding a Monet type of bridge to your painting like this, have a look through my playlist. I've got uh, quite a few on there. So I'm gonna pick up, just kind of scoop into a little bit of that yellow. And we'll have just a little bit of that coming out of our brush, as well as those other colors. So we kind of got a mixture happening. Not everything is the same color, right?
Okay, so I think it's time to start coming in with a few more bushes on this side with my yellow and black mixture. Before we come in with our cool tones, and I'm really excited about um, adding those cool tones because I love the colors that we're going to be using. So let's take some yellow, a little bit of black, tap that in. I've got another stipple mop brush here. You can use any mip, uh, uh, mop or stipple brush that you have. And I'm going to just hop over to this side and just start coming in gradually here. Just a little push, tap. Kind of pushing so I'm not going straight up and down with a brush I'm kind of going on the side a little bit just gonna add little bits here little bits like that along the side maybe we've got a little grassy area here Beautiful little spot to just kind of lay and have a picnic. Always, always like to envision myself in my paintings. That really helps me to express um, my feelings and the energy I want my paintings to have. You gotta be excited about what you're painting or it's not worth doing, I don't think. Try to get in that right frame of mind. Now just a little bit of a highlight right here, I think. Make that just very, very gently. Give it a bit of a glow. Again, this is gonna dry a little bit darker. So don't freak out if you think you've added a bit too many highlights. Just a little bit in here. I'm wiggling and pulling. This, this canvas is definitely too big for my easel. Wiggle, shake, and pull. Just with a little bit of that yellow, maybe a little bit of black. You could even have a bit of that red in there, that reddish color. I actually really like this bright bit of red that we've got going on here. I hope that it dries like that. If not, I'm gonna go back after later on and um, add that again. So I'm just, I keep getting drawn to this area right here and I'm just seeing a little trickle of a bit of a little waterfall, nothing too crazy, but I'm gonna go ahead and trust my instincts with this and add that and I think this brush is kind of calling me this little mini fan brush it is zero it's really really small now what I want to do is take a little bit of white I want to have like a thin thin white maybe just a little bit of that black and let's just see here And kind of turn it on its side. Just have a little indication here of a little, little bit of water. Maybe it comes down here and out into this area. Will that work? I think that's kind of pretty. I don't really know where the water's coming from, but it doesn't matter. Just use your imagination. There, I guess there. Are, Lots of areas where it could be coming from. And then if I feel like maybe I've added a bit too much, I can just go right here, take it off push it around wherever I want it to go. Just a little bit of water like that is so, so gentle and subtle and it makes like a really big impact. We've got like just another little creek that goes back there somewhere. We don't know, it doesn't matter. 
our little world that we're creating. Anything is possible. Okay, so I like that. I want to add a little bit, a little bit of a highlight here, just using that same color. And all that was was a little bit of white tinted with uh, black, red, and it made more black than red, just made this really, really light off-white color. You could use a little bit of a light ultramarine blue for this. That would look really pretty as well. Whoops, I'm going to be covering that up anyway, so that doesn't matter. Maybe we've got a few subtle indications of rocks here. Okay, now we can come in with some of our cool tones. Uh, just before I do that, though, there's just one little spot right here. This is bugging me. I need this to come down just a little bit lower. And you know, this brush really, really is another great brush to use. Just a little flat brush on the side like this, pulling and flicking. Let's add a little bit right in here too. So I'm going to start off with, you know, I'm going to go back to this one here. This one worked really well. And I'm going to start with building up a deep uh, phalo and work my way up to a turquoise and then have just a little hint of this yellowy green in it. Um, so first phalo blue, and I'll show you the phalo that I'm using. This is by Grumbacher, Thalo Blue Academy. It's a really nice one. There's lots of nice Thalo Blues out there. I like this one because uh, you can use it to make some beautiful blue turquoises with. Um, it's just a really gorgeous color. It's one of my favorite shades of blue. Now, what I might wanna do is first take well, I'll show you what it looks like first, just with the blue, and I've got to hop over to this side again, and I'm just gonna start along the edge like this. So push, tap, push, tap. And then I'm just gonna to start to kind of work that out of my brush, make it start to disappear off to the side like that but I want this to be solid here on the edge. Now see the difference in greens that we've got? This is gonna give us that nice balance of hues to our shadows. And then I wanna take a little bit of red and I'm gonna show you how we can change this and make this a little bit darker. And if this doesn't do it with the phalo, then I'm going to have to add a little bit of black. But I really don't want to do that because black can be really flat and boring, to be honest, in a painting. So let me just take a little bit more blue. I'm adding quite a bit of paint. Yeah, FYI, guys, if you're working on a big canvas, you're going to go through a lot more paint. Maybe we'll have some big ferns here so I can even use this to start the beginning stages of some ferns by pushing. Well, you could even use, use this for some palm trees if you wanted to. It's a neat brush. Just one big oval stickler. Anyways, so there's the shadow side over here. And when this dries, that blue and that red, um, we're gonna get a really deep, rich, beautiful color that's gonna look 
nice with all the other colors, uh, play on the other colors, complement them without having to use black. Cause like I said, black is just, it's really intense and not in a good way always, but it's totally optional. It's personal preference, whatever you decide you would like to use, it's completely up to you. And I'm gonna use a little bit more on this side. Now I may not have to get my turquoise out, I may be able to make turquoise with my yellow, white, and this phthalo. So because I've already got a lot of red on this side, I don't know if I will need any to add to this. It's already pretty dark over here. We'll just add a little bit down here. Just sort of graze over that existing color down on the bottom. Create some more depth. Softly blend out the rest of that paint that we've got there. a little bit of this around. Now I'm just taking a wet filbert brush and I'm just going to add a few lines here just for some more uh, just vines and whatever. And I think I do want to use my turquoise just because I really like it and it's the perfect shade already. And this painting, this video is already long enough, so I don't want to really take the time. If you guys want to learn how to make turquoise, I've got a color mixing video where I show you exactly how to do that. So for the foliage, I'm gonna, I really wanna paint some ferns in here. I'm gonna use two brushes to show you. I've got an angle brush here, this is a number 10. And I've also got a filbert brush, and it's a number eight. But you could use any size filbert brush that you want. Uh, you want your filberts to be nice and flat. So if you have one that's um, really, really thick and kind of older and not in good shape, you don't want to use that because we really want to create some nice fine lines using this brush. I'm going to take a little bit of blue and a little bit of the turquoise so it's loaded up on the tip of my brush. And what I want to do is do just a little arc like that. Then I'm going to pull just like we're painting palm trees. Look at that. So when you add both colors and you don't blend them up, they end up coming out blending on their own naturally and differently with each little brush stroke that you make. Okay, so then I'm going to add a little bit more turquoise this time and change this one up. Now I'm going to start to make these a little bit faster. I find it's easier when I don't stop and think about each one I'm painting and I just keep going and going and going. They end up looking more natural that way. This adds some mystery. I love this. This beautiful, beautiful bluey turquoise. What a nice balance this is. It's like refreshing this cool minty blue that we've got here. Look, see how the colors just work their way out of the brush. And you want to just do a little skinny line 
right, that goes right down the center like that. Some of them are a little bit curly on the ends. We live in a spot on Vancouver Island in Canada where these ferns are everywhere you look. And I love them. They have so much movement to them and they're curly and fun to walk through on the trails. Some of them are just giant. And I want these to gradually go into the light a little bit. So see what I'm going to do here is take a little bit of my yellow white with my turquoise. So maybe we'll have a couple that are, hmm. actually, I think I'm going to bring these because it's a little bit lighter over here and I don't want to cover up my little waterfall that I've got there. So this is a safer area. Okay, so I'm going to just start. And the paint starts to work itself out of the brush and then you want them to be a little bit darker as they come down here and then we'll just layer as much as we want change the direction of them I wonder if you guys watching have seen my peacock painting that I did. The colors I'm using right now are kind of reminding me of that painting I did. And I think, oh, that would be kind of cool to have a little peacock off to the side here. Um, I'm not going to add that today, but it's something that I might do in the future. So yeah, don't forget to do your little line inside sometimes. Not everyone, we're not gonna see everyone like that. And if you feel like it's not standing out enough, then you can just go over with a little bit of blue. The idea is just to make them all a little bit different, right? So I'm gonna have one deep blue one in here that's got a little bit of that turquoise little hint of that turquoise in there. You got to remember that it's going to dry a bit darker. So that's what I'm doing right now. I don't want it to uh, fade off too much and disappear. And I'm going to switch over to the angle brush and demonstrate how you can use that as well. Now for the angle brush and my next few ferns and highlights, and this is light blue violet. If you don't have this, you can take cobalt blue or ultramarine blue, mix it with some titanium white until you get uh, the color that we've got here. Anything lighter or darker will work as well. First, I just get my angle brush. Whoops, I've got a little bit of paint on there. Get my angle brush wet. Make sure it's nice and tight together. If it's not, just kind of wiggle it, flatten it. And I'm going to take a little bit of this beautiful light blue violet here. And I'm going to, where should I add some? Maybe I'll add just a little, little bit of it in here. So same technique.
Um, but the nice thing about this too is that if it dries a bit too light, so that looks a little bit too light, I can go over top of it after and uh, filter, use a filter technique to make that darker. I can also change this color to more of a violet. Maybe take a little bit of that phthalo blue in there. See this pretty color? So it's more of a violet purple, which is really pretty. I might just add a little bit of this here and there. That's really pretty, isn't it? Those colors look nice together. Kind of a smoky purple color. Let's add just a little hint of that back there. I'm going to pick up a little bit of blue, a little bit of water, and work that out of the brush while changing the tone up a little bit while I'm doing that. I'm going to take more blue, red, make this just a little bit darker. Mix the, all those colors up, work that out of my brush, and then kind of just cut into it. And I'll come over to this side. So you can really play around with this brush, make curvy, wavy, or exaggerated lines like this. And then some smaller ones by just using the very tip of your brush. We can add some little dabs, pushing and tapping. And again, at any time, if we don't like this and we feel like it's a bit too bright, we can go over it once it dries with another color. Make it dark again. But I just wanna see, I'm curious to see how this will look with a little bit of this soft purpley violet glow. And I've got blue paint, the phthalo blue, and that bit of red is still a little bit wet, so it's kind of mixing in together, and it looks really pretty and creating all sorts of different tones and shades of blue and purple. Okay, I'm going to go back to my phthalo and turquoise and add a little bit more. A few more ferns in here. I want to take some of my yellow along with that and start adding a little bit, a little bit of that as well. You can really just kind of lose yourself in painting these. When you've got the right brush and know how to do this, it's actually a lot easier than you would think. And I hope that I'm um, demonstrating that well. Really, really fun. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of that blue off. I didn't mean to add that there. And push that right off. And the underneath the layers of paint are dry, so I don't have to worry too much about wrecking what's underneath. I 
I love the purples that I'm making with this. It's just so pretty. A little bit more of that blue in there. Make it a little bit darker. I'll add a little bit of purple to this one. You know, you guys, you could add flowers here. The possibilities go on and on and on. I'm really looking forward to seeing um, your take on this on the Facebook group. Can make larger types of leaves. Different things, right? Pushing and tapping. Don't be afraid to experiment with your brush to get different techniques and different looks for foliage. Just taking a little bit of my blue violet now and just adding a few little dabs. So much fun. Okay, for the finishing touches to this painting, I'm gonna be adding a little bit of light ultramarine blue just to finish this off and help everything to come together here in the foreground. Just a skinny little thin outline over part of the rocks and then a few little hints of it in the water as well. And maybe a little bit here and there on the ferns and up on the top right corner, um, just to bring everything together and balance out the warm and the cool light and shadow in this painting. Okay, so this painting is all done. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me for this intuitive painting session. I hope you learned a lot. This is all about using your imagination, not being afraid to take chances with colors. And uh, I'm sure that I'm going to see some versions of this on the Facebook group. So I'm looking forward to that. By the way, I want to give a shout out to all my patrons, all my followers, subscribers. Thank you so much to each and every one of you for all of the support on my channel, especially you patrons. You guys are the ones that are making it possible for me to continue with my channel and all of these tutorials. So have a wonderful day, everybody. I'll see you all soon in another video. Bye.